Hi friends. I don't know if I ever told you I have a mirador. It's a, a mirador is a place on your roof where you have a better view. A patio. And ooh, fly. Um, we're leaving for the motorhome tomorrow and it's always an exciting thing for us to move to the motorhome, but I'm going to miss this for a few months. Please enjoy my stories or whatever else might be on my mind today. Well, it's a short video today. It's going to be one of those that I call potpourri, cleaning out my hard drives before I travel. So enjoy whatever I come up with in the next few minutes. We're flying uh, tomorrow to Tucson to get back in our RV, our motorhome, and we'll be spending several months there, and we have people, uh, renters, coming into the house, so. We've been very busy moving all of our personal stuff out of 3,700 square feet into a couple of rooms that the tenants don't have access to, just to get our stuff out of their way. Uh, it's the uh, 9th of September, day after tomorrow is 9-11, and a long time, many years before 9-11 meant something else in the United States, it meant to Lynn and I our wedding anniversary, September 11th. Uh, day after tomorrow, September 11th, 9-11, 45 years. And we lived together three years before we got married, so uh, 48 years. And so, somebody asked me the other day in one of the comments, uh, what's your emotional response? How do you feel about going back home to the United States? And um, I don't think of it that way. Having been with Lynn for 48 years and 19 of them, that's over one-third of our married life we've spent in Mexico. So when we go to the United States, it no longer feels like we're going back home to the United States. <laughs> we're leaving home in Mexico. Home is in Mexico. Um, enjoy whatever the rest of this video happens to be. While you're watching this, We'll be flying over some of your heads at about 35,000 feet on uh, American Airlines. We go uh, Guadalajara, Dallas, Tucson, and the motorhome is in Tucson. From Tucson, we're going to hurry on up into Rapid City, South Dakota, where my 101-year-old mother lives, and a brother and cousins and... and uh, so that'll be some family time up in Rapid City, South Dakota. And then after a couple of weeks there, we're going to go to Portland, Oregon, where our kids live. And after we spend a few weeks with them, we'll be heading back south towards California, Nevada, and Arizona. So that's the plan. And uh, you're going along. Somebody asked me the other day about Lynn's menorah collection. We are not Jewish, but we have uh, many Jewish friends who admire Lynn's menorah collection. Actually, it's just a subcategory. She used to collect candlesticks, and that's probably, oh, a third of what she's actually got in boxes packed away. Those, some of them big, 
But the menorahs were just, uh, like I said, a subcategory of her main collection of candlesticks. Since I'm talking about Lynn's collections, I'm going to take just a minute for equal time talking about my own. I have over 1,000 antique padlocks, and I don't have all of them here in Mexico. Most of them are stored in uh, Oregon, but check this out. This is my miniature collection. And I have a few here, just smaller ones, like this one says Cupid. These are Chinese um, chest locks. They like to do them in, like animals. Those things sticking out the front are the keys. And that big thing below there is the key for that big one. These are just smaller padlocks. I got some padlocks that are like a foot in height. And like I said, I've got a thousand antique padlocks and they're all in storage in Oregon. When I was collecting those locks back in the 70s and 80s, uh, you had to go to a secondhand store to find them or a junk store. If you found one uh, and they were like, you know, 20, 30, 40 bucks a piece, uh, it was your one chance in life to get them. And then with the advent of eBay, um, a collectible lock that might have been worth 40 bucks some time ago was worth five or eight dollars because you didn't have to go all over the country collecting them. We did it for fun. And uh, some of those locks today are worth five bucks and some of them are worth 20 bucks. Um, there are a few that are worth hundreds. I have never collected railroad locks, which can be worth thousands, or story locks, which can be worth lots of thousands. But it is a fairly um, extensive collection in terms of all the different kinds, from pancake locks to uh, tumbler locks to six lever locks to uh, trick locks to all kinds of locks, yeah, combination locks. Uh, I've got one uh, push button combination lock in there that's... Uh, well, I don't know what the today's price is, but it was expensive when I bought it. Anyway, um, I, I, they're all stored in five-gallon buckets and suitcases. So we're talking about a five-gallon bucket of iron. It's heavy. There's like uh, five or six buckets and two suitcases full of a thousand paddle locks. And when we moved to Mexico nearly 20 years ago, I just stored them in a very convenient place, my son-in-law's garage. Well, he's moved in all these years four or five times, and he pays people to move him, but still, it's, uh, it's something to move. <laughs> and he has no interest in padlocks. I keep telling him it's his inheritance, but it's, uh, it's a joke between the two of us. Anyway, I, you know, it's time for somebody else to enjoy those instead of having them just hermetically sealed in a bucket. Um, if you know anybody or you're interested in owning a, an antique padlock collection, I'll make you a deal. Hey, I got an award from TubeBuddy for hitting two and a half million views. Let's keep watching. I've been practicing my time lapse for you. This is a 29 second time lap covering two hours of those Lirio plants moving in the lake. And it's coming up. Wait for it. There's going to be something that streaks through the picture right there. <laughs> that was a kayaker. He has no idea how fast he's paddling. There's my famous omelet, eggs, casera salsa, browned onions, brown them first, then put them into the eggs, and fresh basil all over it. And when it starts to get firm, we spread cheese on the top of it and fold it over. <laughs> 
I don't erase this one from my iPad when I'm editing. I just keep it in there to remind me who I married. Huh? No, I gotta get a picture of these guys over here who think you're well, Tanta! Tanta! <laughs> Here's another old clip I think I've had in a video before some time ago. And it's not one that I explain, except to say that, you know those t-shirts that I wear with the lizard that say, Rincon de Guayabitas? Well, there's an all-inclusive resort out there and our volleyball club has gone out there for Thanksgiving several years. Like I said, I'm not explaining this clip. You'll just have to figure it out for yourself. Hey, if you like me, give me one of those thumbs up. And please subscribe and hit that little bell so you know when I post next. Please share me with your friends on social media. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed what was on my mind today.